We are looking at the monster that is ChatGPT and thinking about how well it handles physics. I was, well, I wouldn't say I was unaware of ChatGPT, but one of our undergraduate students who takes the second year quantum world module that I teach, what he did was in front of me on the computer, typed in the first question on the coursework I'd set them which was uh, to write a piece of Python code. We'll actually look at it later on. And lo and behold, in front of our very eyes, up comes the code. Was the code correct? Well, we'll look into that in a little while. Um, how good a job did it do? We'll look into that in a little while as well. But the fact that you can just type in a question and it produces output is really, really quite intriguing. So I've been playing around with it a little bit over the last week, couple of weeks, and suggested to, to Sean, suggested to Brady, well, let's try and put this thing through its paces. Let's give it some physics questions. So what I want to try and pull out is not can it do this integral, not can it do this piece of maths. What I want to do is, is see to what extent it has any intuition or any, anything that we expect of our students in terms of does this answer make sense and does the reasoning here make sense? We'll look at the most basic question first, but before we do that, can we do something that's fun? Let's get it to generate a mission statement for the University of Nottingham. Just to show you, we're going to be talking about maths and we're going to be talking about physics concepts, but let's just see how it does on the stuff that it's really, really good at. Write a mission statement for the University of Nottingham. The University of Nottingham is a public research university committed to excellence in teaching and research. Committed to excellence. Is there any word more nebulous than excellence? What else are we going to do? Strive for mediocrity? And to fostering a sense of community and social responsibility among our faculty, staff, and students. But this is this is the mission statement. This is this is exactly the type of blurb you get from every university, not just in the UK. These things are interchangeable. You can take the University of Nottingham off there and just replace it with anything else. We work to translate our research into practical solutions and to contribute to the economic, cultural, and social well-being of our region and beyond. So let's start with a, a GCSE question. So this is middle school, relatively low level. Let's see how well it does if I can find my GCSE papers somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, as if by magic. So this is paper one. So, so it's an electric car being recharged. So now an interesting thing, lots and lots of diagrams. Lots and lots of diagrams, another diagram, and it's all about interpretation of those diagrams. And this is not just for um, middle school or GCSE physics. This is across the board. Diagrams, diagrams. So with chat GPT being text, at the moment, it doesn't have the facility to uh, really parse those and extract the information. When it does have that facility, and that would be a remarkably powerful facility, it will be extremely impressive. So, um, assuming it does the interpretation correctly. So let's choose one. So that means we're sort of limited in our options, but let's choose one, um, question one actually in this, this paper. The battery in an electric car can store 162 million joules of energy. The charging station has a power output of 7,200 watts. Calculate the time taken to fully recharge the battery from zero. So I'm going to type that in. Let's grade them as well. So this one's worth three marks. Go for a chat GPT. Thinking. Thinking. Good start. To calculate the time it takes to fully recharge the battery from zero, you need to divide the energy stored in the battery by the power output of the charging station. Since one watt is equal to one joule per second, you can also express the charging station's power output as 7,200 joules per second. Thus, the time it takes to fully recharge the battery from zero is 162 million divided by 7,200, which it says is 2,240 roughly seconds. What's interesting here is that the reasoning is correct, but I'm not certain that number's correct. We do what all good physicists do. You always look at that answer and make sure that that answer makes sense. So 162 million divided by 7,200. Let's say that's roughly 10,000. Just we'll round it up just to get a ballpark figure. It should be greater than 16,200. It looks like it's lost a factor of 10. Yeah, it's out by a factor of 10. Now that's intriguing, isn't it? It gets the reasoning correct. I guess it's language, it's a language model. It's making pre predictions based on the, the correlations between words in a sentence. I'm not entirely certain, I've got to admit, how it handles maths. Maybe we can come back and have a whole video about that, Sean. But that is intriguing that it gets the reasoning correct 
and drops a factor of 10, like all of us do. That's ex yeah, it's exactly the type of mistake I would make. I spent my life correcting for factors of two and factors of square root two. So um, that's intriguing. So uh, given that there's three marks for this, it's got the reasoning correctly. Um, it feels almost um, unkind to not give it the three marks, but it didn't get the correct answer. So let's say two marks out of three. Okay, let's give it a textual question, again from this GCSE sort of um, middle school type paper. Generating electricity using nuclear fusion will have fewer environmental effects than generating electricity using fossil fuels. Explain one environmental effect of generating electricity using fossil fuels. Let's see how ChatGPT does on this. Okay, so we can't put the bold in. Well, I don't know, maybe we can use HTML and we can put a little B in braces before and afterwards and slash B afterwards, but let's just go with this. Thinking. So apparently it's, tr it's been trained in terms of the ethical um, considerations and in terms of misinformation, they um, have severely restricted it apparently. There are ways around that, however, I guess, in terms of, you know, you could put it in the context of a novel or something or a fictional scenario. One of the main environmental effects of generating electricity using fossil fuels is air pollution. When fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas are burned to produce electricity. They release a range of pollutants into the air, including carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and particulate matter. These pollutants can have serious impacts on human health, including respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, and can also contribute to the formation of ground-level ozone, which can lead to smog and other air quality problems. Two marks. I think it's, it's fair to say on that. Two out of two for that question. Now, we could spend a lot of time in the GCSE um, questions just going through individual ones. It gets a bit boring. Let's up the, the level. We're going to go to A level now, so AP level, so high school uh, level. Um, the type of questions that um, uh, form the basis of exams for entry to university. I think you all know what A levels are. Notice if I just flick through this, how often we're getting figures. So. For those of all those academics out there, including myself, we're going, oh, this is the end of assessment. At the moment, best thing to do is just make sure that it's all about data interpretation. It should be about critical thinking, data interpretation. And I think at the moment, if we want to bypass JATGPT, then make sure we put lots of figures in there, make sure it's all about data interpretation. Particle of mass M is oscillating with simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion, the bane of so many students' lives, but it's a very beautiful thing and it underpins so much of physics, including vast swathes of quantum field theory for one and quantum mechanics. So this is a very traditional question. As you can see, it's one mark. Let's see how it goes. We're not going to give it the most of choice. Motion, period. One mark, so it should be able to do this pretty quickly. And actually, for those of you who are physicists, you're doing A-level, you should be able to do that fairly quickly. You don't have to think about causes, you don't have to think about signs. You can think about causes, you can think about signs, you can think about derivatives, you can think about all of that, but all you need is conservation of energy. You know this. All you need is conservation of energy to do this. So, thinking. Ooh, no, it doesn't. Oh, that's bad. At the maximum display. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, that's really bad. The very first line is nonsense. Yeah, it's interesting. It gets the right answer, but for the wrong reasons. The maximum kinetic energy of the particle occurs at the maximum displacement from the equilibrium. Absolutely not. So that's wrong. And uh, regardless of it getting the right answer, if it were me that were marking this and the, the student has put that down and hasn't crossed it out, I'd be very, very unwilling to give a mark in that sense because that's a complete misunderstanding of the dynamics of simple harmonic motion. So. Maximum kinetic energy in a particle doesn't. So basically, let, imagine a pendulum going back and forth. We started off from um, a fixed position, so it's not moving. So it's got maximum potential, let me stand up. It's got maximum potential energy here, zero kinetic energy. Then it's going to have zero potential energy here, maximum kinetic energy. This gets it completely wrong. And what's interesting is that that first line is in the context of other stuff which seems broadly correct. It's put the maths down relatively correctly, but it doesn't get the physics concept, which you wouldn't expect it to, but that's worrying. So for those of you thinking about doing using ChatGPT to do your homework, 
think carefully. This is the maximum kinetic energy of the particle. Interestingly, it got the right answer, but for the wrong reason. And for us, so in this case, I would be less willing to give the mark, and I think a lot of um, physics teachers would be less willing to give the mark than in the first case, where it got the reasoning correct, and then it just screwed up um, in terms of dividing. That doesn't really matter. Well, it doesn't matter if you're sending probes to, to, to Mars or whatever. You don't want to be out by a factor of 10. But the understanding was there, and that's what you're probing in an exam. The whole reason I started looking at this was because a student brought a coursework question to me, typed it in, and said, so let me... Um, what I want to do is ask it... This is a tricky question. This is a conceptually tricky question about quantum mechanics. Um, and I know some of you out there won't have really done a huge amount of quantum mechanics. Some of you will. I know there are a lot of um, undergraduate students. This is an important question. Consider the following statement. OK, I can't put, I'm not going to put psi in. I'm going to call the quantum state y. Um, Consider the following statement. The Hamiltonian operator acting on any quantum state y returns the same state and its associated energy eigenvalue. E this is what the Schrodinger equation, hy equals ey, tells us. Explain why you agree or disagree with this statement. Now, I tell the students in the, in the quantum world class that um, if, if, I, if they come out of the module not understanding and not being able to get the right answer to this question, I failed. So let's see how chat um, GPT does. Explain why you agree or disagree with this statement. And there are five marks for this in our marking standards. So let's see what chat GPT does. Ah, it's wrong. Okay. We could go into details about just why it's, it's wrong, but the important thing is that that particular equation is called the time independence routing equation. It only works for certain states, what we call stationary states. The question very specifically says, Hamiltonian operator acting on any quantum state. This is exactly what I would hope that students do not tell me. So zero marks, chat GPT, really bad fail on this. Definitely needs to go right back to the start of its quantum mechanics knowledge and get a drill. I can point it to some very good online resources about quantum mechanics if it really wants them. OK, quantum world coursework. I'm going to have to set a new one next year, aren't I? Um, so it's actually about the um, last computer file video we did about the superposition. It's a lot of fun to do that one. But it's about um, particle in a box, superposition of states. And what the coursework asks the students to do, we, we're trying to integrate more and more um, computing coursework uh, into our physics degrees. And because for, for me, computing is equally important, if not more important than mathematics. That, that's a controversial statement. But um, write a Python program to plot the probability density for the n equal to 1 and n equal to 100 eigenstates of the Hamiltonian for the infinite potential well in the position representation and in the momentum representation. If you're not at second year, possibly end of first year undergraduate physics level, that's not going to make a lot of sense to you. But let's just see what ChatGPT does, does for this. And I need to tell it what it is, so I'll add a little bit. This is not quite the question. I'm just going to give it a little bit more clout of the Hamiltonian for the... Okay, that's effectively a trimmed down version of that question. Let's see how it does. This requires a lot of conceptual understanding. Oh, here's a... okay. OK, good start. OK, it's using appropriate units. OK, that's fine. Good. Now it's done it that way. OK, 1,000 points might be quite enough for something which is oscillating as high as that higher eigenstate. But OK, let me scroll down. That's interesting. It's putting the energy eigenvalue in as well as the eigenfunction. Probability density. Then it's going to calculate the Fourier. Oh my God, this is bloody hell! Oh, good. No, it's it's yeah, it's scarily good. In in the in terms of doing the coding, it hasn't quite got. It's exactly. It's made the exact mistake I'd hope the students wouldn't make. Um, but in terms of the overall structure of the code, that is pretty impressive. And it's even. The FFT shifted it. Wow. OK. And then what's it doing? Just 
It is. So it's now explaining what it's done. The program first defines the position of momentum grids on which the probability density will be plotted. Okay, so we'll leave it going, churning away in the background. That's pretty impressive. Um, the one issue, however, is that the reason I set that question is it requires careful thought. So what we have, this thing as ever, which even if you haven't done quantum mechanics, you'll recognize this in terms of standing waves on a string. That's what we're talking about. The important aspect of this is that in each case, those functions go to zero outside the well. What it's done is it's just assumed that those sine functions continue on outside the well. That's exactly this mistake I don't want students to make because that doesn't give you the right momentum representation. So it's performed as, as well as a, a student that has a, a good understanding of coding and very good understanding of coding, I would say, but not such a great understanding really of the physics of this problem. They understand um, a lot of the physics, but not quite enough. And they've made exactly the mistake, I say they, anthropomorphizing um, there. Um, ChatGPT has made the same mistake I would expect and would hope that uh, many students wouldn't make. So it's failed the sort of conceptual test here again. If we could influence matter at the subatomic level by clicking our fingers, we wouldn't have to spend billions on CERN. You we wouldn't, wouldn't have to, <laughs> and we wouldn't need this bloody thing. Uh, th th no, this is just nonsense. This really is just nonsense. And, you know, the argument will be made, well, science doesn't know everything, so, you know, how do you know? Sure, science doesn't know everything. If science knew everything, I'd be out of a job, Brady would be out of a job, because everything would be out there. But science knows some things. 